six minutes after two o'clock, the second and final hour of 702 Afternoons. And coming up, as we do on a Wednesday, we have a masterclass. And today is all about why home ownership is a journey. And so many of us have grown up being like with that dream of I want to own my own home. Ne? And then you meet the bank and you're like, 20 years. you. So today, let's talk about why it is a journey and of course how we can make it work for you we'll be joined by head of product from APSA home loans Porsche Lekape for the conversation and I'll be looking forward to taking your calls with your questions on 011 8830702 your sms is 31702 your tweets at relebogile m at radio 702 using the hashtag 702 afternoons and the whatsapp line 072 702 1702 702 masterclass this masterclass with myself, Rele Bukhile Mabocha, on 702 is brought to you by ABSA Home Loans. T's and C's apply. ABSA is an authorized financial services and registered credit provider, NCRCP7. And joining us in studio is the head of product, ABSA Home Loans, Porsche Lekapi, the perfect person to be chatting to us on why home ownership is a journey. Porsche, thank you for coming through to studio. How are you doing? I am very well. Thank you, Rele Bukhile, and good afternoon to yourself and the listeners. Thank you so much for having us this afternoon. Can I ask you to sit a smidgen closer to your microphone? There we go. I was going to say, because earlier we were talking about bonuses, if I was your boss, the bonus you'd be getting because you got the brand colors to a T, even the red lipstick, I'm <laughs> like, yes, she is here for Absa. So let's, let's talk about the history when it comes to home own, o- home ownership, because we speak about it being a journey, and we look at our different backgrounds and and that attachment we have, maybe chat to us from your experience. What have people shared with you about why home ownership is such a big deal? Even though we will get into, um, you know, experts will start to say, oh, it's not the time for home ownership. It's actually the trend is to rent and rent and and have tenants and and all of these things. You don't even have to buy the home you live in. But people are like, I don't care. I want to have that ribbon and the key and post and say I bought a home. Absolutely. Thanks, uh, So perhaps let me start by saying, as APSA Home Loans, our purpose statement is to house the nation and shape the industry in a meaningful way, right? Mm. And housing the nation gives a sense of pride. I think a lot of us know that having a home as a sanctuary that you go to for safety uh, is important to all of us. Mm. And I think that's why home ownership is so important for us as a bank. And for us, home ownership is not just about, you know, getting a home loan, uh, finally getting the key to your point. It's about the memories that you build in that home. Uh, It's about making sure that you give pride to your family for owning a home. So really that's what home ownership is for us uh, Mm. as an organization. When maybe in your own personal journey, when you were just (laughs) Mutofela before you now moved in to the industry, what are some of the misconceptions that you had? Because it's a different thing when now it becomes your job as opposed to this young working professional who starts out what was what what was your view and how did it change as you got into the space? Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, home ownership is said to be something that's unattainable. Mm. Uh, and that's why we are having this conversation. Because, I mean, as I was preparing to come on A, I was actually thinking about some of the mistakes that I've made, yes. <laughs> you know, as a homeowner. And uh, not knowing that I can actually negotiate from an interest rate Mm. perspective, that I can actually negotiate even the purchase price, right? Mm. So most times we think home ownership is unattainable. In fact, interestingly, one of the stats that we've seen is that the average age of a first-time buyer is 39 in South Africa. Mm. Imagine. Mm. So it actually shows how sometimes we delay buying that first property because we are afraid of taking that first step. Mm. Uh, so really it's about making sure that we demystify uh, the myths that are sitting around home ownership and we also make it seem attainable for the mm. average South African out there. So when we say um, home loans or home ownership, clarify for us what that means from your perspective because for some, home gerai, it's mm. like your family home. For others, 
home ownership is a business. It doesn't necessarily, it's just like I'm in the property market. From your perspective, when you speak home ownership, are we talking about you living in a place you call home that you have bought? So, Lebukhile, as APSA, we say your story matters, mm. right? So, home ownership could mean different things for different people. To your point, so home for some is the place that I'm renting. Yes. That is the home. Mm. I may not own the property, but it is my home in the meantime while I figure out what is my next step, mm. right? Home ownership for somebody else could be I'm a property investor or I've got a suite of Airbnbs across mm. the country and I'm a homeowner. So depending on where you are in your life journey, home ownership is what it means to you. Mm. Mm. And I think it's, it's, it's great that you clarify because when we do have conversations around home, it's, it's a very emotional mm. ter terminology. Hence, some people might take their time, whereas I've also sort of grown to learn and have a different view on, on property because I, I, I started late in the game. I remember being a teenager saying, oh, by 21, I'm going to be a millionaire <laughs> and I'm going to have properties, you know, and then real life happened. And then you're like, okay, is this real <laughs> life, right? But then once you're in it and, and once you start to learn the game in inverted commas, you're like, it actually is not as complicated as what I used to think it is. So when you say people delay out of fear and I'm going to be clear and put finances aside so we're not necessarily dismissing the fact that unemployment is a real thing we're not saying okay you got your peace job go buy a house no okay we 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 let's use the ideal scenario what are you finding that people are fearful of is it the 20-year commitment is it the fact that they don't know that they have negotiating power is it the fact that when they you know, go to the rental agent, the rental agent will say, we can assist you, and they give you a plethora of options that you can apply to? Is it that some people don't actually have three months pay slip because they work for themselves? What, what is it that you are seeing is the challenge? Thanks, Rile Bukhile. And I think, you know, there's so many reasons, right? But I think what we've seen uh, around first-time buyers is the lack of knowledge. It is a space that I've never been in. And if home, if my parents have a home, I most probably wasn't there to see them walk through the journey. I was born and here I was in a home. So I actually haven't seen anyone go through that process for most of us as South Africans, right? So it's that fear of, I'm not sure how to go about buying my first home. I'm not sure if I will qualify. I mean, you know, sometimes I do get calls from friends, family saying, I don't know if I can actually qualify for a home loan, mm. right? Mm. Um, it's also that sense of it's such a big um, investment, right? Mm. If I'm going to buy a property of a million rand uh, of or 1.5 million, mm. it's such a big investment. I'm scared to be making that decision, A, on my own. Uh, and also sometimes what we do is we say, oh no, I want to surprise everyone. I don't mm. want to tell everyone of this big you know, investment that I'm making, um, but you go through it alone. So there's that sense of fear because as a first time buyer, you've never actually gone through the process mm. yourself. And I think also that the fact that it's a 20 year investment, you mm. don't know what you don't, you don't know what the future holds. Yes. Um, also what we've seen is, especially for those that are currently renting, there's that fear of now I'm going to be responsible for this property. If there's the water, there's a, a geezer burst, now I'm responsible. I can't you phone can't the landlord. Call the, you are the landlord. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that one. Exactly. What about levies? Now I'm responsible for the yes. levies. Yes. So those are the kind of things that we find for some buyers are most likely to be afraid of mm. in terms of taking that first step. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, the lines are going to be open to you on 11 883 and the WhatsApp line 072 And we continue this conversation on why home ownership is a journey. Feel free as well to share what your home ownership journey has been like. 20 years is new pop and place, but maybe you're one of those who say, actually, I thought it was going to be 20 years and it ended up being less or it ended up being 
longer. Share your journeys with us. 19 minutes after 2 o'clock, today's masterclasses on why home ownership is a journey. We're with Porsche Le Club, the head of product, APSA Home Loans. And we have been chatting about um, not just Porsche's experience, uh, but also asking all of you what your home ownership journey has been like. We've spoken about when we say home loan, it doesn't just mean home high, where the family lives. It can mean a whole lot of different things. So we take your calls on Audible one w three zero seven zero two in the WhatsApp line zero seven two seven zero two one seven zero two. So Porsche earlier on, you know, I was asking about um, um, the fears that people have, and I was asking about the things you learned. What are some of the mistakes that you made? When now you're in the game, you're like, yo, I wish somebody was there to advise me because the point you raised is so valid. If you don't have access to individuals um, in your home that you can actually say, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. Um, please advise me. I'm very fortunate I have my dad. And he's, he's the one who taught me. He's like, no, tell your bank to, to do less. No, less interest rate, tell your bank this. And not everybody, him being an accountant, understanding certain things, but not everybody has access to a person in their home. So what are some of those tips that you can already say, yo, these are lessons you can learn? I can tell you a personal experience. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I must uh, say a disclaimer that I wasn't working for the bank then. Yes. Uh, so I was still outside of banking and I bought my very first property. I made three mistakes. Mm. The first one uh, was that I didn't negotiate on the purchase mm. price. I assumed that the advertised price is the price I need to pay. So I actually didn't negotiate. Mm. And secondly, I didn't negotiate for interest rates. So the estate agent at the time was working through, you know, a mortgage originator. Yeah. They gave me the best deal and I took it. I didn't negotiate, right? Wait, it is best in inverted commas, ne? The best deal. According okay, to the yes, yes. <laughs> estate agent, yes. right? And the biggest mistake that I made was I bought into a sectional title and I did not ask for the financials only to find out a couple of years later that this uh, body corporate was in trouble financially. We found ourselves without water, electricity. It was such a big mistake. And, you know, it cost me quite a lot, but I've learned from it. Can I just tell you, why are your mistakes my mistakes? <laughs> because the one about the sectional title and not asking for the books, massive mistake that only later you're like, how? Who must pay? Right. And then if your sectional title is small um, and very few people, and I went from tenant to homeowner. So I was like, well, I'm already living here. It's simple. I know everything I need to know. That is a massive mistake. So a person can say, I would like to see the financials of the body corporate. Absolutely. And you mustn't be afraid wow. to ask for it. The state agents know you can ask for it. And take your time. What I do find at times is as, um, you know, homeowners or when we apply, yes. we feel under pressure to make that offer right on the spot. Because they make you feel like there's so many people exactly. viewing the place. Yes, yes. So, yeah, that's my experience. Okay. And I think it's important that you're mentioning um, these particular experiences. So why would then you say home ownership is a journey? Why is it not a destination? Why is it a journey? It's a journey. It's not a one-time achievement. Mm. Getting that key and moving in is not it. In fact, the journey starts there, right? Because mm. when you move into the property, you realize that, oh no, the roof is leaking. Now I have to make sure that I fix the, the leaking roof, right? Yes. I think one of the things also, and just to make it more relatable for our listeners is we have to make sure that while we are learning as part of the journey, because it's learning. You and I just spoke about our own experiences, right? Now we know. And good laid, Sana. You are there, you must pay. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe next time you're going to be Umastandi, yes. you're going to be the landlord. And yes. it's another learning curve for you. And I think learning and adaptation 
is one of the things that we need to take into account mm. as part of the journey. And by adaptation, I mean, and let's take the, the let's take COVID as an example. Yes. All of us across the world actually had to adapt as homeowners because we were all locked up in our homes mm. and we had to adapt to this new way of living. We had to make sure that our homes are comfortable from a play perspective because our kids are there uh, from a work perspective some of us has had to do renovations in our homes mm. we had to turn the third bedroom into a study we had to make sure that the environment is conducive for learning as can well can i just correct you know my dad made this clear to me before he says study is where you learn <laughs> home office is where you make money oh. so please kiss home office. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, mm -mm, if you're not making money, they can study. <laughs> but yes, and, and, and that was um, something that people didn't anticipate because now the needs when a person is looking, maybe before they never thought, oh, I need to go into the office. P there's still many people working from home and are remote workers. Now they're like, yo, I thought I needed a two bedroom. I actually want a three bedroom. Right. And also part of it is adaptation in terms of there's now this new world of work that says I can work from anywhere in the country. And that's we saw that's where we saw some immigration, right? Some people decided, ah, now I can go live in, in Cape Town. Yes. And so it's part of the home ownership journey. And I think really I read an article this morning that spoke about the fact that interest rates have been going up over yes. the past couple of months. Mm. Uh, and they took an average loan amount of one point three million. And they were saying that over the past twelve months, interest rates have gone up. And, you know, consumers are paying around 4,200 rands additional a month, mm. right? Um, just to meet those monthly repayments. They calculated around 50,000 rand. Who has got 50,000 rands lying around? Um, but you need to make sure mm. that as part of your home ownership journey, you adapt, you learn, you adapt, you learn, you adapt. That's really what we mean when we say it's a journey, it's not a destination. Definitely, definitely it is a journey. And I see some messages that are coming through on 072-7021-702 with questions here for our guests. So here's my question before we go to all of the listeners' questions is around the home loan game now because the part of negotiating with your bank or, you know, making an offer less and negotiating there, asking for the books, um, you still haven't even reached the part where you're starting yet. You still haven't started. I mean... My understanding at the moment with somebody who's trying to sell a property is there's a backlog at, is it the master's or a, a court? You know, just the property is sold, but they're waiting for documents. They're waiting for things. Um, what are those other things that you think people don't take into consideration can cost them? So if, let's say, you told yourself, okay, I'm going to move in in three months, but there's a backlog, now you have nowhere to live for X amount of time waiting to move into your place and maybe the owners are like, sorry, we're not going to do mm -hmm. rental until. What are those other unforeseen circumstances that maybe people don't think about that can cost them? I think let's take, um, Lebo, Lebo, thanks. let's take the example of a friend who's selling, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I'll just talk around the selling process. So one of the things that we don't always take into account is that there's a commission that you need to pay mm. to the estate agent that actually advertises your property. So if you say, I'm going to sell my property at a million, there is a certain percentage of that sale price that will go towards the estate agent. So you must already account for that, yes. right? Yes. And one of the things that we also don't plan for is that on the date that the bond registers, where the person who bought uh, the property from you, their bond registers, it's actually their property now, mm. right? And the moment that property registers, you have to start paying occupational rent, mm. right? And we don't take into account that at times, the bond can register before you actually have secured your bond. And mm. that period between selling and buying your next property comes at a cost. So mm. those are some of the things we have to think about uh, from a selling perspective. And I think those are, are major things because the journey can also be, as you say, not just the buying part, but the considering. So you might find yourself saying, I'll never sell this property. And then a developer comes with an offer you just cannot refuse. So I can see definitely how it is a journey. There's a message here on uh, X from Zali Kazi who says, I bought a unit and didn't ask about the financials. 
now I'm trying to sell and due to upkeep, the units are selling for less and the financials are messy. Some owners don't keep up with the levies and it affects all other owners. Yo. Sure. That's a, that's a big lesson, right? Um, it, it is one of those things that um, she would have to try and figure out what to do to get out of that um, transaction. Perhaps, you know, if, you, if, if, if they can, perhaps let out, rent out that property in the meantime, mm. hoping that things will get back to normal and they can sell the property again. Uh, and unfortunately, those are some of the lessons that we learned. I mean, you and I spoke about mm. it uh, as well. Indeed, housing the nation. Our masterclass is on why home ownership is a journey. And we're with Porsche Legap, head of product, Absa Home Loans. We take your calls on 011-883-0702 and the WhatsApp line 072-702-1702. Now, one of the things that our listeners don't know, but they get to hear it first, is that this is going to be a series. We're going to be doing this masterclass um, twice a month. And we're going to be having some interesting conversations. But before we go Go to all the questions from the listeners. Portia, share with us what um, listeners can expect from this series. Absolutely. Thanks, Rilebukile. And I think perhaps you and I have already started, right? Which yes. Which is we want to create a safe space mm. for our listeners, um, for learning. Mm. And we're going to do it in two parts. The first one is we're going to do it through storytelling. Mm. Um, just you and I have spoken about our own stories and some of the mistakes that we've made. And we're going to be encouraging our listeners to share their stories, mm. whether it's mistakes that you've made, whether it's an inspirational story. Uh, tell us about where you are in your home ownership journey. Um, that's what we're looking forward to. And secondly, we're also looking forward to inviting you know, experts uh, within the home loan industry to come and talk to us about uh, whatever topics that uh, we have on that particular week, um, mm. we're looking forward to bringing some experts around women uh, in property, mm. right? We're going to be talking to the youth uh, around June month mm. uh, and talking around, I think sometimes we talk to the youth about home ownership in the context of buying your first property. Mm. We're also looking forward to talking around opportunities within the real estate industry mm. from a career perspective as well. We'll be bringing experts from a credit perspective and so many more. Uh, protecting your assets, as an example. Mm. What do I need to know now that I've secured this home loan to keep it from an insurance perspective, wills? Um, you know, if I get into trouble, as an example, perhaps interest rates have now mm. gone up. I've got 4,200 rents to pay and I can't afford it. What are my options? Who do I talk to? What processes do I need to go through? And then, of course, I mean, um, um, the, the, the big question is, why is this so important to ABSA, where you are inviting listeners to not just share their stories, we also have a competition. <laughs> so we're going to be running a competition as well. Uh, I won't say too much because yes. then I'll be giving away yes. uh, the prize that you have. <laughs> but that's why it's important that we hear stories. And I think the stories also help us to... Uh, encourage uh, South Africans to actually start seeing home ownership as attainable, as I mentioned before, right? And for mm. us to learn from each other. Storytelling allows us to learn from each other. It also allows us to be inspired. It also instills hope. Uh, I think for those that have made mistakes and have bounced back, like mm. you and I, uh, you're giving somebody hope to say, if you are in that situation, you can actually get out of it and turn things around for yourself. So it's really um, that for, for, for APSA. And I think what's so great is, you know, being in a position where you can also impart the knowledge that you've learned along the way so that other people don't need to make the same mistakes Absolutely. that we have made. So it, it all comes together. And we also know that um, change is inevitable. So the industry in itself changes. And even in the space of how people come through asking for loans and um, what you know, the criteria on all of those things, they evolve as well. So before we take a break, I want to ask um, about the different milestones or stages of home ownership, because some say, in my view, my home, own, my home ownership journey is done when the bank says, here's your title deed, 
referred to it away, and I say yes. It's mine. But others say, ha ha, as long as you're still paying levies, even if you have the title deed, the journey is still continuing. What do you say the milestones are? Absolutely. And I think, let's first agree that it's not a linear process, mm. right? It's got its ups and downs. Mm. And um, we all experience life differently. Mm. Right. Let's all agree that we're not going to walk the same journey uh, exactly the same way. So everyone's story is unique and everyone's milestone comes at their own time. Yes, right. Yes. So if we take it from a uh, life stage perspective, um, we're looking at different stages. So let's talk about what you and I could have done better, which is the pre buying stage. Right. Mm. Uh, there's that milestone where we, you actually have to start preparing for home ownership. Right. Mm. Doing the research that you need to in terms of the area that you're buying into, making sure that you're ready from a credit risk perspective, uh, making sure that you do pre qualification as an example to make sure that you actually do know. Have, can you imagine? what it's like when you've already put down an offer, the bank comes back and says, unfortunately, you don't qualify. And you've already decorated that house. In your mind. In Yo, your mind. I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> that is, and, and some people do get that far in the process. Can I pause this part to ask, when did it change? Because back in the day, you could just put in your details on many websites to see how much you qualify for. Why do you now have to have a specific process um, going before the bank says you are pre-approved. Was it that it just required too many people? Uh, what was the issue? Was it too many people were just constantly applying to see what they qualify for without even uh, having found a house that it became streamlined? You actually can still get pre-qualified today. Uh, various okay, banks, yes. various mortgage originators do have calculators. They also have pre-qualification tools. You can still do it today. It actually helps you to also understand how much you qualify for mm. so that you don't go and put down an offer for a 2 million rand property when yes. actually you can afford 1.5 million as an example. Yes. Right. So back to the different milestones. So that's the first stage. And then there's the stage where you're now buying your, you actually have put down an offer. And in that stage, you have to understand, you know, some of the responsibilities you have yes. as a home buyer. And one of the things that I know most people go through is that buyer's remorse, mm. right? You've seen the property, you've put down uh, an offer, and then you go home and yes. you think, ah, but you know, I, sh I shouldn't have, right? And you've already yeah. signed the OTP. Um, so when we talk around, the, when the legal expert comes in, they're going to also talk to us about, can you get out of uh, an offer to purchase? Mm. What are the implications of uh, cancelling, mm. you know, on that transaction where, you, where you've already signed that offer to purchase? Mm. Um, so that's what part of it. I think one of the stages that we must also think, and I think if you think about the stage where you're now matured, you're in your 30s, 40s, yes. 50s, life happens. A it lot does. can happen, yeah. right? There is, I'm getting married, mm. and perhaps myself and my spouse both had properties of our own, two bedroom each. What do we do now that we want to live together? Do we sell both properties? Do we keep one? Do we rent the other one out? Um, the family grows. What do I do if I've got children? Do I extend the property? Mm. Um, perhaps you get divorced. Mm. Those are some of the things as part of the home ownership journey we have to think about. What are my options? Can I buy my, my ex-spouse my ex -spouse out? Mm. Um, what are the options? We also don't talk enough about preparing for death. It is nine minutes to three o'clock and we've been having a masterclass on home ownership being a journey with Porsche Le Club ahead of product Absa Home Loans. And we're going straight to your questions on 011-883-0702 and the WhatsApp line 072-702-1702. One says, Hi, Lebkhile, please can you ask your guest, why do we pay for 20 years and not 10 years as a starting point? I'm paying 330,000 rand for so many years Lindy, where maybe then Porsche, you can share with us why did the setup become 20 years? I would assume it was so it, it could make home ownership more affordable. Absolutely. Um, is it Lindy who asked the question? Yes. Thanks, Lindy, for that question. Um, I think the 20 year term uh, is a term that, to your point, allows for access to housing, mm. right? The longer the term, the more affordable the monthly repayment. Right. Mm. And I think uh, what Lindy can also do is to actually speak to a bank and ask them if they can reduce the term. 
uh, you can ask for the term to be reduced. Um, an alternative way that Lindue can pay off her home loan quicker is actually prepay. Mm. She can actually pay more than she's expected to. So let's say she's paying 3,000 rands a month. Uh, she can choose to pay 5,000 rands a month. In fact, what that does is that it, A, reduces the term of mm. the loan. She'll pay off the loan quicker, mm. but also it reduces the interest charges. Yes. Because remember, we, we, we charge interest on the outstanding balance. So the mm. quicker she pays off the loan, the less interest charges she pays. And of course, um, when you do speak to your, your banker, as you have rightfully said, you can discuss the options because if now, let's say, you get a big payout, you can also say, please, can you guys send me the settlement amount because I'm ready to settle. So the conversations must con continue. Um, here's an interesting one. Are there any loans for those that work overseas? That's question number one. Thanks, uh, Who's asking the question? Do you have the so name? they don't have a name okay. here? Yes, but they're asking: awesome. Do you offer loans for people that work overseas? I mean, I'm assuming if you have yeah. a bank account in South Africa, it can you be can. verified yes. definitely. Absolutely. So, from an APSA perspective, we've got a uh, we call it international mortgages. Yes. Uh, so, if the listener can also check out our website and check for that information, you can actually apply for a home loan if you're overseas, but you want to buy a property in South Africa. Um, it does come with terms. Uh, we do ask for a deposit, yes. um, but it is possible. What? Uh, so another question is being asked, can a foreigner buy or invest in a house or an Airbnb in South Africa? What are the terms um, um, when it comes to home ownership that you have seen with somebody applying for a loan if they aren't a resident or citizen yeah absolutely so um none uh, non residents of south africa are also able to buy property in south africa it does come with its terms mm. um one of the things of course we're going to look at is your your income your expenses as we do today um usually for uh for non-residents we do ask for a deposit as well yes. remember as a bank we also need to make sure that we're able to uh, ensure that from a risk perspective we're mm. able to cover ourselves. Um, but yes, foreigners can apply. Uh, it does just require you to follow the necessary processes and the documents as well that will be required from a credit risk perspective. We've got your voice notes coming in on 072-702-1702. Hi there, 702. Uh, beautiful mm. topic. I love it. But this is for the bankers. Why don't you guys create like a system to assist those people who need homes where when you take out a home loan and after every three years you guys give like a discounted rate on the interest because the interest factor is like 20 percent so even if you give like an incentive maybe you give the client after three years say ten thousand rand back to his home loan doesn't matter it doesn't have to go to him it goes into his home loan as a gift for being a punctual payer a punctual loyal customer won't that be nice and you can create more people purchasing homes and living in homes? Thank you. Well, <laughs> I think it's a wonderful idea. However, all banks, obviously, there are laws in the country, correct? So um, how are, maybe to help answer, how are you governed as banks when it comes to home loans? There's certain rules that apply. Um, um, how are certain decisions made in the case of what was asked? Firstly, I want to say I um, I think my boss is probably thinking she needs to hire a new head of product <laughs> <laughs> because that was quite an innovative yes. uh, idea. Um, but also to say that, you know, because what I'm hearing from that conversation is there's a need for us to take into account that interest rates do go up. Yes. And how are we helping our customers to make mm. sure that there's more affordability? That's the crux of the, the question. I do think that, you know, uh, for those that do have home loans uh, today, um, the first point of, uh, of of contact that one needs to make is with their bank, right? If you feel that it's becoming more unaffordable mm. to service your loan, um, you can actually talk to your bank, uh, have a conversation around the affordability. In some instances, the banks do actually give you a rate reduction. Yes. Uh, obviously based on your own merit, right? Mm. If you can prove to the bank that your risk has declined, you've probably got additional funds that you want to put down, mm. capitalize it, reduce the exposure from a bank's perspective, 
if banks are able to have that conversation. One of the things that we also don't talk about is switching. Yes. Um, so if you believe that your bank is charging you more than they should, and even after multiple conversations, you know, re- your, the, the rate is not reducing, you do have the option to move your home loan to another bank and mm. negotiate an even better interest rate. Those are some of the options that are available. And I'm glad you mentioned that because that was one of the questions. So my commitment, because this is a series of master classes, is that uh, we will be keeping all of your questions and we'll be uh, um, um, asking them of all our experts. Portia, thank you so much for joining us and thank you to all of you for tuning in to the 702 Masterclass with myself, Rilebo Khile Maboja, brought to you by APSA Home Loans. Come back every first and last Wednesday of the month for more conversations with property industry industry experts guiding you on the next chapter of your home ownership story wherever you find yourself on the journey so go to the 702 facebook and x pages to share what your home ownership experience has been or what you want to write in the next chapter of your home ownership story because yes it is never ending and you could win a cash prize of five thousand rand every episode that we're together absa home loans is committed to housing the nation and to empowering africa's tomorrow together one home ownership story at a time and your story matters absa t's and c's apply absa is an authorized financial services and registered credit provider ncrcp service